Today's translucent Bondi Blue shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. This is a 1998 Bondi Blue iMac G3, revision B. In my opinion, it's the best of the original first generation tray loading iMac G3s. But this one is a bit sick. Sometimes it makes a sickening zap sound from deep inside the machine here with a corresponding screen flicker. And that's a big problem because we need this thing for kind of an incredibly rare upgrade that I have sitting around. So today, let's tear this thing apart, check out a couple of the common culprits for this kind of issue, and see if we can't bring this thing back to life. Well, all the way back to life. It's not dead. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy the white knuckle experience of working on 30 year old high voltage CRT circuitry, just kidding, we work safe here. I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So this is the Revision B iMac G3 from 1998. And I think it's the most special of the first wave of original iMacs. Now I know that's a bold claim, but hear me out. This machine was released as a refresh of that original iMac G3, mainly to upgrade its incredibly weak video card. Revision C added the famous fruit colors, like my favorite grape. Yeah. Oh, they're so heavy. And bumped the CPU speed from 233 in this thing to 266. And Revision D bumped the speed even more to 333 megahertz, even though otherwise they were pretty much identical on the inside. Of course, after that, Apple more radically redesigned these machines with the slot loaders, which were very different on the inside with different motherboards and video cards and, of course, much faster processors. But it was only the very earliest iMac G3s, A and B, that had the infrared port. But more importantly, the top secret mezzanine expansion port inside. So, given that the Revision B iMac is identical to the very first iMac, just with six megabytes video memory instead of a ridiculous two, this Revision B iMac G3 is the best possible base if we wanted to build the most powerful possible original iMac G3. So, most special iMac, I rest my case. Anyway, that's exactly what I wanna do. Build a super powerful original iMac G3 and then see what kinds of shenanigans we can do with it. Except it's not very happy right now. It has a dreaded and kind of common issue. While it's running, you will hear kind of a terrifying zap from deep inside the machine somewhere in the monitor area and the screen will flicker in a very terrifying manner. Damn it. And before I stick that incredibly rare upgrade into this thing, we definitely need to address it because if this thing fries that upgrade, I'll never forgive myself. There are a couple of common culprits for this type of misbehavior, and it might actually be kind of an easy fix. But if it isn't, and we'll get into what the difficult fix is once we tear this apart, I think what we'll do for now is swap in a known good tray loader CRT while this thing is, uh, well, gonna be waiting for incredibly rare parts. Right after this word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like, say I wanted to build a website extolling the forgotten virtues of the second Revision B Bondi Blue iMac G3. Not only could I build it in minutes with Squarespace, but I could do it without a single line of code. There's a ton of beautiful templates that I could choose to start from. And from there, it's simple to build a great looking site that's also fast, responsive, and works great on mobile devices. With Squarespace's extensive built-in toolset, I can also optimize for SEO, manage a mailing list, check my analytics, and much more, all geared towards managing your entire web presence. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code ACTIONRETRO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. 
So if you've been around here for a while, you've probably seen me struggle to take apart one of these tray loading iMac G3s before. Also, I took this one apart in a bonus video to just make sure there wasn't a leaking battery in it. But these things are pretty easy to get apart. So to make sure we don't scratch the screen here with this nice foam. There's actually only one screw right here that we have to pull out. But the difficult thing is actually getting the bits out for this screwdriver. But no, the difficult thing is actually undoing the clips that go around here. But I have my trusty green Tortex Turtle guitar pick used, of course, so it's extra stabby which does a great job of undoing those clips. So let's see how easy this goes this time. All right, single screw is out. Now just kind of wiggle the pick in to separate. Ha ha, <laughs> got it. It always kind of feels like you're gonna break this thing. All right, so that is the actual computer portion of this computer. Ew, there's a hair in there. It's not my hair. <laughs> but we need to go much, much deeper. Deep into the bowels of this thing because it is not very easy to get to the analog boards. Luckily, iFixit has guides for this, which I am going to follow. And I will, of course, link down below Put some silly kind of fan in here. I don't think I'm supposed to take that out yet. <laughs> Ow, it bit me. Well, the iMac has drawn first blood. What is this, a uh, Hrutke Mods video? All right, all right, let me actually follow the iFixit guide now. These particular tabs are not flexible. I am terrified I'm gonna snap one of them. Ugh. I hate it. I hate it a lot. Ugh, jeez. That was a nightmare that I never want to revisit. Oh my God, gross 90s grime. Yeah, this internal structure is just so fragile these days. There are these little plastic covers over these screws. They just shatter even with a guitar pick. <laughs> Jeez. Ugh. <laughs> All right, well. I never want to do that again. That was terrible. Okay, so here is where I am going to give the warning that there are dangerous voltages in here and big capacitors that hold power for a long time. I'm going to discharge this CRT before I go any further. And yeah. So there are a few different things that could be causing these issues. And yeah, the one that I hope it's not is this flyback transformer here, which if that's failing, it can internally short kind of sporadically. And uh, yeah, that would cause that arcing sound and the screen flicker. But it could also be loose solder joints or cracked solder joints on the transformer here. It doesn't really look like that's the issue, but I'll reflow these anyway. And I'll check the solder joints on the neck board here inside of this little neck board prison. 
but let's start with the good old fashioned blow off and just nick some of this dust in here. And we're going to re-grease around this anode cap here with some dielectric grease. Yeah, I wanna take this off and look for leaking capacitors because I can't really see without taking it off. Huh, x-ray warning. That's weird. All right, actually this just lifts up, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. Boy, there's a lot of connectors. This is very annoying. All right, well, looking around the board with my Adrian's Digital Basement style goggles, I don't see any leaking capacitors. They all look pristine. One of the things you're supposed to do is look at the flyback transformer and see if it's cracked or, or damaged, but this one is encased in this plastic. So there's no way to see what's going on on the inside. So what we're gonna do is reflow the solder connections to the transformer here. Put a little bit of dielectric grease uh, where this suction cup connects to the monitor. And well, we'll clean that off too with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. And hope that fixes it. Oh, and I guess we'll reflow these solder joints too on the neck board. Anyway, if that doesn't fix it, guess what? I lucked out. I found a source for replacements of this flyback transformer that still has them in stock. And actually I placed an order for it today and I already got a shipping notification. So who knows? I probably won't get it before this video is released and hopefully I won't need it and I can just kind of keep it on hand but yeah, if all else fails, we can replace this flyback transformer. Anyway, let's reflow these solder joints here. We'll just give a quick clean to the uh, CRT's orifice. <laughs> All right, and a little bit of dielectric grease here, which is, well, the same stuff you would put like on a spark plug, which you can get from the auto parts store. which will make a nice seal. Okay, so let me preface this by saying it is dangerous to power this thing on with the covers removed like this, although I did put the metal shielding back on, but we wanna see if, well, if I put it back together correctly and if the screen flickers anymore, and I wanna watch the back for any electrical arcing. So let's find out. Screen initialized. We have picture, thank goodness. All right, booted into 10.0.3, which I installed on here to be funny. And so far the screen looks good. Let's stress test this a little bit and see if it starts to flicker. All right, booted into Mac OS 9 so we can have some silly shenanigans here. Ah yes, Windows 2000 Professional, my favorite Macintosh operating system. Yep, just setting up Windows 2000 on the old iMac G3.
Who boy, Space Cadet Pinball is uh, really chugging on here. <laughs> It just went through the flipper, like clipped through the flipper. What shenanigans? I call shenanigans. All right, so I've spent many, many very silly hours testing this thing out and uh, just, well, playing Dark Forces and Space Cadet Pinball on Windows 2000 because that's normal. And there's not a single snap, crackle, or pop. So I'm pretty confident that we fixed this thing through the cunning use of goop. <laughs> Dielectric grease and cleaning up that anode cap and I don't know, maybe reflowing those solder connections fixed it, but whatever the case, we didn't have to fix the flyback transformer. So I guess now it's time to relive the nightmare in reverse and put this thing back together. And now that you're thoroughly impressed by that high quality jump cut, it's time to get excited for that incredibly rare upgrade that we're gonna toss into this thing in the next video. And I really thought my next bonus video was going to be actually soldering in the flyback transformer, but turns out we don't have to do that. This flyback is just fine. So instead, the next bonus video is going to be taking a look at this little potato that I just got which, uh, yeah, might just be a better libretto than the libretto at doing what you would want a portable handheld computer to do in 1997. And check it out. It has a little infrared port right here to perfectly match this infrared port. So I think we could do some shenanigans with that. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, Camila Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, Greg Rutke, Harris Brody, Jason Papaz, Justin Hemmings, Justin Reed, Lyle Truid, Michael Mulhern, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Sutek, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these shenanigans possible.